Hey, welcome back everybody to My Daily Bread, the podcast. I, uh, we have a treat today. This is pretty awesome. So many of you know her from My Daily Bread, the East Coast call, but this is my sister, Mary Beth. And I, I guess this would be a Paul Harvey moment, the rest of the story. Yeah. You got to see one of the podcasts with my twin sister, Rhonda, and now we have my sister, Mary Beth. I don't know. Eventually, maybe, maybe. I don't know. We have to think about this. We might bring in more of the gang. We'll see. I don't know how much I want them to tell. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I'm so happy that my sister, Mary Beth, is right here with us today. And we're just going to sit and have a conversation, maybe reminisce a little bit, and then talk about the power of a community in My Daily Breath that's happening across the globe. It's quite amazing. And so, uh, Mary Beth, welcome. I'm glad Thank we get you. to sit Good together. To be here. Yeah. yeah. And we're, what's pretty awesome is we're sitting in your sanctuary. We are. Your church. Grace Community Church. Grace Community Church, sitting, recording these podcasts from here today in Cleveland, Tennessee. And it's wild how life is just full circle. Um, I, I'm reminded in this whole weekend, I'm reminded to be careful if you're burning bridges uh, because you don't want to burn people out of them. And uh, wow, what a, just a, a testimony. Here I am back in Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, where... Uh, my life started taking drastic turns, uh, which I call, uh, many of you know, the scenic route to Jesus. So I started my scenic route here. And what a beautiful place to do a scenic route, right? Yeah, yeah. Tennessee's beautiful. Tennessee's Mountain. beautiful yeah, here. Yeah. Gorgeous. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about family. We grew up in ministry. We did. Uh, you can testify to the moments of being drugged to the nursing homes on yes. uh, Sunday mornings to sing before we went to Sunday school even. We did, yeah. We would, our mom would take us to the nursing home. Anchor Lodge. Anchor Lodge. Wow, she I just remember the name. She lined us up. Lined us up yep. and we'd have to sing or, or yes. what else did we do? I remember singing. Read some of her poems. We did read her poem. Yes, we read her poetry. Yeah, mom was a, a, a great poet. She was. She loved to, to drop a rhyme out every once in a while. <laughs> Yes, we have quite a collection of her poetry. Yeah, she would, she'd be like a Southern gospel rap music stud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was, uh, our mom was, um, she loved people. She loved people. She loved people. And I, I really attest my love for people from growing up in that environment. For sure. Yeah. Our mom, um, she took people in. Always. Always, yeah. Uh, you never knew when you woke up in the morning who might be laying on the floor on the couch, yeah. right? We had a, a very open door policy home. And I'm you sure know, I'm glad she did that. Yeah. I feel like she sewed into the future for her kids. Sure. When when many of us just took routes that were were not good, uh, she sewed it. Now that I'm now that you're saying that, she sewed into uh, the Lord opening uh, doors for us to for safe places. I um, certainly did that for my life. That's beautiful. Yeah. What do you? What's one of your favorite memories of us growing up in ministry? Let's keep it ministry minded okay. today. Yeah, we could really go. Yeah, we could go. Yeah, let's not go too far into that place. But what were some of your favorite ministry moments growing up? Because you you got to experience ministry differently than you and I did, differently than all the other kids. Yeah, we did. Um, I think from very young ages, um, we knew our calling. Even if we didn't stay true to it, even what you know through our whole life at that point, but I think that we knew, and um, I honestly know that as a young boy, um, you had the personality for people, and I remember you know there was so many. Um, I think of Gladys Bissett, who adored you, GB. We love to refer to, and um, I feel like um, those uh, women in the church really started you off on the right path of understanding um first of all to love people our mother started that and then also just fostering those gifts people pouring into you mm -hmm. um pastors um you were shown favor with a lot of pastors throughout your childhood even probably before you remember mm -hmm. um i don't know if you remember you what well, you won't remember but you were infants you and rhonda and even toddlers um our church was very instrumental in community and helping our mother uh, reign us all to church. Yeah, because we lived about a block and a half away from the church. Yes. Yeah. And they, because there were so many of us, um, the teenagers actually would be assigned to come to our home 
on Sunday morning to help get us all ready so we could get to church. So even just that investment of the church investing in us, I think taught us some of our, our leadership that we walk out today. And so, and then pastors taking us under their wing, um, mentoring us, allowing us the opportunity to stand on the stage. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about that for a minute. The opportunity to be behind the pulpit on a microphone, whether that was to sing, um, fostering our gifts and talents, you know, in music. Every pastor. Every yeah, pastor. Every that one of them gave us that opportunity. Yeah. So I, I really look back and see that the Lord was um, working your ministry plan from birth. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wild. Yes. Like our parents were poor. Yeah. They didn't. My Our dad was a, a steel worker. Yep. Mom did not work outside of the home, although she had the bigger job raising the kids yes. uh, from today's perspective. And we, we didn't, we weren't a family of means. I mean, there were eight kids at home. Yeah. And when you have one paycheck, we had a, a four bedroom home and a one, four bedroom, one bathroom. Yes. And, um, and, and one of those bedrooms was really a family room that my dad made, made into a, a bedroom. A bedroom yes. for he and mom. Yeah. yeah. So we, we were not a family that had uh, big resources. Yeah. We struggled. I remember. Uh, we would get our, our block of government cheese every month. <laughs> and uh, that was good cheese. It made good mac and cheese. It <laughs> did. Uh, I, we, we didn't get Rice Krispies. We got crispy rice. Yes. We, <laughs> we got powdered milk. I grew up, we grew up that oh, way. I don't know, yeah. Sure. And, uh, but we never knew we were poor. No. No, the love, of, the love that we felt in our home and the love that our parents had for us. And mom and dad showed it in different ways. I mean, uh, Mom was uh, much more hands-on. Dad worked long hours, lots of times, uh, all shifts. Mm -hmm. he, um, so his shifts rotated. And actually, Dad wasn't even saved until you were probably... Two years old. Two, yeah. That's mm -hmm. about right. Yeah. yeah. But um, just, you know, Mom was very dedicated to ensuring that we had a foundation in Jesus. And um, that, that makes me kind of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, right yeah. that you're right in the hummock, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, she really... She kept us pointed to Jesus. It was her yeah, role. It was her role. Yeah. And she was so rich in her love for Jesus. She, um, Our mother was not educated. I think she went to sixth grade. Sixth grade. Dad, I think, yeah. was eighth. Mom was sixth. And But um, what she did know, she made sure that we knew it too. Yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah, she did so well. Yeah, she did. Quite so, an amazing woman. Yeah, she story. was. I can't believe it's been 18 years now. This yeah, this month. Yeah. yeah we lost she, her that she went home to be with Jesus or received a reward. She, um, one of the things that I love about how she raised us is we never had the option of staying home from church. Oh no. Every time the church door was open, Peggy had and all the of her kids yes. in the sanctuary. Yeah. Every revival. And you know, back in the day, revivals were not three days. No, they were seven and eight. Seven, eight, ten, 10, and then up to six weeks for some, depending yes. if it was a really good yeah, good evangelist. Then you had really long revivals, right? Yes. And so I really appreciate that. At the time, I didn't appreciate it. At the time, you know, I knew my friends were staying at home, and and we, we had lives, and we wanted to participate in other things outside of the church. And Peggy was not having it. Like if the door is open, you're there. And if you were sick, that's okay. Come on, get your prayed for. Yes. Oh, this is one of uh, we tell this story a lot. Uh, our mom, if we would call home from school. Uh, hey, mom, we're sick. Come pick up your kid. Yeah. Uh, she'd pick us up, take us to the pastor's house. And we'd get prayed. He'd pray for us. And then she'd take us back to school. There was no doctor. So, well. yeah, there was no <laughs> such thing as getting to just chill. Now, she did get relaxed with Rhonda and I. She did. Yeah. She did. The older you older kids, yeah. um, you know, you told the line a whole lot more than we did. There was a whole lot of grace. What I think happened is she got tired. She got very tired. <laughs> she had you when she was 40. 40, yeah. Yeah. So she, um, by the time you were 18, she was. We were wearing her out. Wearing her out. She's like, I'm done, Lord. You take them. But it was beautiful to watch um, her pour into all of her children. And we're all so different. Uh but yet we all have that core love of family, love for each other. And we've all done so many different things. But um, it's beautiful to see how her prayers that she poured out. Yeah. You could uh, you could yeah. walk past her room and hear yeah, her, her crying out to the Lord. Yes. 
and you knew that yeah. there was some really there was it's interesting because there was a it was a both and moment you knew that she was pouring out her heart and that there was something that was gravely wrong and at the same time the security you felt from her praying and declaring and trusting in god put this calm and this peaceful presence over our home when when looking back knowing more of the story yes realizing our mother could have gone any other way she could have thrown in the towel with serving the lord yes but she was so her face was set like flint towards the lord it was and it's what kept her alive it's what kept her raising the family and moving forward and not giving up i i don't know if i've ever known another story of another woman uh like hers that just would not give up so tenacious in her faith and trusting Jesus in the in the face of disappointment and heartbreak and all the stuff. Yeah. We'll have to tell her story one day. Someday I'd love to tell her story. Yeah. But it, it makes me think of one of my favorite verses right now is, I have set the Lord always before me. He'll be at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Yeah. And that's what she did. She lived that scripture to so her dying breath. to her dying breath. And um, I'm just so grateful that we saw her faithfulness to the Lord. She died of breast cancer. God chose not to heal her on this side of heaven. Mm-hmm. And we could have let that tear us down. Of course. It, and it, yeah. it rocked us at some moments. Mm-hmm. But I am so grateful that watching her life helped me turn that into a bigger faith, knowing that she received the reward that she worked for. She lived it, she worked for it, and she earned it. She got there. She did. And Jesus, and she's sitting at the feet of Jesus. She got the well done. She got the well done. Yes. There's not a moment. I sing on praise team here, Grace, and um, I love singing, uh, love singing with you and love singing in general. But there's hardly a Sunday that goes by that I'm not on a microphone that I don't close my eyes and think, Mom, and that Jesus is me singing. <laughs> yeah. I get to sing here, mm-hmm. but boy, to sing there. And she gets to live that out. Yeah. And so it was such a reward and such something I look forward to. And one thing she was very faithful about, if you were leaving the house or leaving her presence, I, I plead this. the blood of I Jesus blood over you. Of you. And this is something I'm practicing on my daily bread. <laughs> Every morning Whoa. when we close out, even if we've already prayed, I, I say the words, I plead the blood of Jesus over you today mm-hmm. because it's a practice she taught me. I did it for my children. And I remember I standing in front of the door. We had that yellow house, 582 Lafayette Street yes. in Sheffield, yes. Ohio. Yes. We were standing, we would stand at the door. It was cold outside. The bus was waiting. Barb, our bus driver. I remember Barb, the bus yes. driver's name. Faithful Barb, lady. Faithful. Faithful. Yeah. She was at mom's uh, memorial yes. service. Yes. And she was so faithful. And uh, she would be waiting for mom to pray over us before we all got sent out to ride the bus together to school. Yeah. And that was the prayer every morning, just like you're saying, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. And none of us, not one time in all of our school career, any of us no. faced any crazy, no. unbelievable school right. disaster. Yes. And I still believe to this very day that that was because of mom's prayers over our lives Absolutely. that still are circling the throne of God today. Amen. Ever, ever interceding for us. Yes. Uh, the prayers that she's prayed over our lives. And we're seeing the fruit of that. Yeah. Happen now. Absolutely. And I, I encourage you, and I'm going to look at the camera and say this. If you have a child or if you have a young adult or a, a, a junior child that you feel like is out of the reach of Jesus, I encourage you to pray that prayer over them mm-hmm. because God is faithful and he will. Um, th- there's a scripture that says, um, teach them. Uh, train of a child. Yes, train of a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. And we're living proof of that. Yes, we are. Yeah. We sit here as living proof that God is faithful. If you pray over your children and dedicate them back to him, um, he's faithful to take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. I made her worry a lot. You did. <laughs> you were her greatest joy. Oh, oh, and her fear. greatest pain too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. She prayed me. She prayed me back into the kingdom. And yeah. I'm so grateful. Yeah. For that. And let's talk about that for a second yeah. because I think this is a story we've not explored sometimes. You know, um, when you moved in with Brian and Penny, mm-hmm. um, she had to release you. She did. And she to, did. To their care. And that was hard on her. 
because she was your mother and, and Brian and Penny became parents to you as well. And I think that the grace that she did that in and the reward, um, mm. I just, I think about that and it's not easy to give up control of your own child and release him to another couple. And you were an adult, but it's like Hannah spirit, taking yes, Samuel to the, but table. in her spirit, wow. you know, um, she knew when she, Peggy could, could not no longer be the person that needed to carry to the next level. She knew that, mm -hmm. um, she did that with me with round trees mm -hmm. and, um, and Chuck and Brenda round tree are forever engraved in my heart forever because yeah. they poured into my life at 13. I think I met them when I was 11. But I remember most uh, vividly 13 on until I came to the university, the college at that time. And um, but mom knew when she needed the support of another family to bring us to where God had the next step for us. So I love that about our mother. I need to. You know, it's interesting you say that because now all of a sudden I realize that she knew when to release. Yeah. And wow. <laughs> yeah. She knew it in release, and, it and it takes a mother to know that yes. that moment. She did say to me um, after I had been in in Phoenix for a little while. She said uh, she reminded me. She said when you went to Tennessee, I knew it was just for a while. When you went with this with this ministry, I knew it was just for a while. When you were doing this, I knew it was just for a little while. She said, but when you, uh, you know. When I gave you to Brian and Penny, I knew it was forever. And they were instrumental at saving my life. Um, I tell, I tell my church, I tell, uh, when I'm leading Bible studies that had the Lord not put me in Phoenix when he did, uh, I would have, my mom would have gone to my funeral before I ever went to hers because I was on that path of death and, uh, and headed in such a direction that my life was just being destroyed. And and mom recognized that. And I didn't know that until after she passed, when I read her journals and at the end of every journal entry, she would say, oh God, keep my Roddy. And uh, it prolonged grief for me for a while because I realized how my decisions would uh, were affecting her sleepless nights, yeah. uh, not knowing where I was. She would, even, she would even call me after I had a cell phone. I was living in Nashville. She would call me and say, my son, where are you? Oh, mom, I'm at home. I'm in the bed. And it was a lie. Yeah. But she knew <laughs> it. She knew it. And <laughs> and she would call me out on it. And uh, I'm thankful for that grace that she walked in to be able to release me. And the Lord knew exactly where to put me in order to get my life back on track. And, and he did uh, with Brian and Penny. Yeah. And uh, I'm grateful. And Brian and Penny have become family to us. Yeah. You know, um, Brian... Uh, and Penny led worship at our mom's funeral. Yeah. So that, even just the picture of that, yeah, that they, you know, she loved them so much, and 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 them being able to walk us through that journey mm -hmm. in very tough times oh, at that time, man. very tough days. Yeah. So um, it's just God is so beautiful at orchestrating the big picture, <laughs> the bigger picture. Yeah, there it is again. And um, you know, you you have a twin sister, Rhonda. I'm not your twin. No, but they all think we but, are twins. They, we're the most alike. Yeah. So, um, and in a lot of our ways, but um, even all of our family, you know, they're everyone's gifted in their own talents. And um, it's so beautiful. I, I think if our mom was here now, she would be so proud of, um, of what happening. she poured into and what's happening. Even with you and I, with My Daily Bread and, and us getting to do this ministry together, you know, um, our family is being reached. And beautiful. Ways. It's unbelievable. Yeah. How, uh, yeah. you know, we, for many years, what for whatever reason, whether it's hurt through uh, unmet expectation or yeah. uh, so, so many of us kind of scattered away from the the hand and the work of the Lord. Yes. Now we're seeing you and I are getting the the yeah. privilege to see yeah. that come back together. The Lord restore a family system and restore uh, the heart of sons and daughters for Him. And I and I can't help but recall the promise that uh, on her deathbed, mom went, where she asked the question, I want to know that you were going to yeah. be with me in heaven for eternity. And she we gave, us. yeah, she asked all of us and we gave the generic answer. Oh yeah, mom, we're going to serve the Lord. 
And she stopped us right there. It was very apostolic of her at the moment. She stopped us and said, no, no, no. I want to hear from each one of you individually. And she made us each yeah, answer to that request. And it was the prayer of her heart that we would all serve the Lord. And it, we're almost there. Yeah, I'll be really interested to see what happens when, when the whole, when all, all yeah. 10 of us say yes. Yes. Uh, when that has finally happened, it yeah. should be, in, we should probably watch out. The Lord might be doing something great. Yeah. Um, but to see the fruit of that happening now, I'm seeing the fruit of a promise from 18 years ago. So whatever promise you're holding on to, yes. I feel like that needs to be said. Whatever thing you've been praying for, don't think that that prayer is dead. That no. prayer is just actively yes. making its way around the throne of God. And he's responding in a timing that we don't understand. I don't understand his timing. No. I can't figure his timing out. No. But I'll tell you, even though I'm about to be 50, I feel like I'm 30. Yeah. I do. And he's he's restored to me favorite. the years. Yeah, it is favorite. Yeah. He is restoring to me the years that my sin and my choices and my decisions robbed from me. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thankful for it. Amen. I want to be a strong old man. That's right. And I, I want to be fully able to do what he calls me to do until my dying breath. And when he's done with me, I just want him to take me. Amen. Yeah. We've been fortunate. Oh, we're so and Even in the bad stuff, even in all the, yeah. the crazy crap, uh, yeah. we've been very fortunate to get to grow up in ministry and to be around great men and women of God who have poured into oh. us. I think that's what makes yeah. you and I, uh, we relate on that level yeah. is we were favored. I don't know how else to say it. We yeah. were favored yeah. Absolutely. To, to build relationship yes. with men and women who of God who poured into us. Yes. I've always been close to the pastor. Yes. My whole life, every the pastor, pastor yes. always yes. would take me under his wing. Yes. And and I'm doing that now with with uh, young young men and women Amen. and it's the greatest it's the greatest joy of my life to pour into young people who have a heart to serve the Lord. If yeah. I don't do anything else, if I don't make $150,000 a year again, <laughs> I don't care. I I would do this for Jesus. Uh, it is broke as a joke. I would do it. And I think that's so important that what that we understand that our talents and treasures and our gifts and anything that Lord the Lord brings to us is never meant to sit. Yeah. It has to flow through us and um, it's very, yeah, I, it's all tying together, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but I, I do know that um, for such a time as this, mm -hmm. the story of Esther has been very uh, relevant in my heart lately. And it's because I feel like even in my career path, you know, I'm not on paper qualified to be where I am. Yeah, I understand. But if God calls, he qualifies. Yeah. And it's given me an opportunity to speak into people's lives. I made a horrific encounter. I'm a nurse. And um, I was called to be a nurse at five years old in a hospital bed, looking out through a window, nurses sitting at a desk. And I don't know why, but I remember the moment. Yeah. But so I, I to be able to wrap nursing and ministry together is such a beautiful thing. And um, nursing and is pastoral. Oh, it's very pastoral. Totally pastoral, yeah. yeah. And and the Lord opens opportunity. You know, you in many circumstances, you're you're speaking to people who are on their deathbed, and so it's a beautiful thing. Um, and I've I've had that portion of ministry too, but now I'm in a, a situation where I'm able to pour into um, other nurse leaders, and such a beautiful thing because they foster um, so many people, and um, I love people. Yes, and you do. I, I love people. I love. We clown you sometimes for how much you love people. I know. My husband says, I don't understand it. <laughs> I just don't understand it. He's, you know, he, he's not as uh, loving of everyone as I am. And um, I trust usually without um, question until I'm given a reason not to. But I, and I'm thankful that, that, that God has let me be that way. Mm. Um, and that's walked me through some tough roads. Yes. Yeah, it has. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the love of Jesus is such a beautiful experience. And if mo our mom passed anything on to us, it's the love of Jesus. She sure did. The love of whosoever will. Yes. Yeah. She opened she her door. She never disqualify anyone. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. She opened her door to it whosoever irritated will. dad sometimes to know it. It really did. <laughs> it irritated us. <laughs> yeah. 
them again, Mom? They're coming again. They're coming again. <laughs> but, you know. It, Didn't but, you just feed them yesterday? Right. <laughs> yeah. But what a beautiful picture of uh, Jesus that she portrayed. She was his faithful servant. She was. Yeah. And uh, she even be- demonstrated. She demonstrated some things. We talk about this on My Daily Bread. Yeah. One of the things that she demonstrated, if someone offended her, oh, yeah. if someone hurt her yeah. greatly or deeply, mom would make a meal for them and take it to their house. Or a cake or pie. Or a cake or pie. Yeah. And it wasn't Miss Millie's pie either. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she was a. You gotta watch. You gotta watch the help to yeah. get that one. Yeah, she was a gifted baker. She was. Oh man, she gifted was a gifted baker. baker. Yeah. yeah. She was. But I loved that she taught us that instead of talking about your enemy. Gosh, I'm preaching to myself. Uh, instead of talking about your enemy, yeah. instead of wanting revenge, like uh, I talked about with Alphonse earlier, instead of getting revenge, she knew to bless her enemies. Bless them that persecute you. Uh, do good to those who, yes, who don't do good to you. And she she didn't just say that. She didn't just preach that. She lived it. Oh, she walked it out. She walked it out. And some of the moments where yeah. some of the stories that I know that we don't need to rehearse, no. she was one of the most gracious people. And if I could learn a tenth of that, a fifth yeah. of, of that principle, yeah. Uh, I could be a lot further along in ministry even. Uh, and and certainly in ministry, you got to have tough skin. Oh. Mom knew that. Yes, she did. Tough skin. She had tough skin. She did have tough Man. skin, yeah. I think, too, um, her heart of uh, forgiveness was beautiful. We, we saw that witnessed in her marriage yeah. um, with her children, with her in the church. Um, even with her siblings, Mm -hmm. we saw that lived out, uh, in front of us. And, um, you know, she taught us the principle, even as when we would fight, do you remember? Oh man, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Go hug your brother. Go hug your brother. And then that didn't work. Yep. Then you had to hold hands. Yes. Uh, didn't we have a t-shirt that we had to wear once? I feel like there was a t-shirt that we had to all put on together. together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Yeah, Peggy so, wasn't playing no games. No, uh-uh. no, so yeah, and she she wanted to make sure that you knew that you weren't going to bed mad at your brother or sister. True, you had to fix that. Um, mm-hmm. We were we were taught to love each other first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember um, as a teenager in high school, um, she we had neighbors, you know, and if they couldn't go home, they knocked on our door, and yeah. the new mom would open the door for them. And I, so her ministry. What kind of crazy was that? It was very crazy. <laughs> In this day and time, it was <laughs> so done at all. But, you know, she did it. And I, I, I mean, I can remember people that were under the influence of alcohol. She would open the door, let them in. <laughs> all these children right <laughs> in here. Yeah. But, you know, she was faithful to trust the Lord um, with that, that he would protect her. And I love, I just love how she walked out. Um, the life of Christ. She she didn't only believe it for herself, but she, everyone she encountered, she made sure that they knew that she loved him. Yes. Not just that, you know, she, she didn't just say it. She shared it with every person yes, she that she came in contact with, whether that was through saying his name or through her, her spirit of hospitality yeah. that she was so gifted in. And... Um, the love he had hospitality down to a oh, science. to a science yeah, yeah. she was yeah. amazing at it. and you know we didn't have a beautiful home no. and matching dishes like i have now oh no and and linen napkins we and had country crock butter bowls absolutely no yeah <laughs> those were dishes and yeah. the dishes didn't matter uh-huh. and but it didn't matter to her yeah she was so rich in um spirit yeah and it made out for all of the things that we sometimes still and you ate that food no one cared what that food came in that food was so good so good cornbread fritters yes oh man gravy and biscuits poke a whole cake oh mom my word Uh, one of the things i remember in ministry with mom um i remember tuesday morning prayer meetings yeah sister brandon sister brandon and the ladies from the church they had these tuesday morning prayer meetings and in the summer peggy didn't leave us at home oh no you went yeah, we and did. yeah, and there were no coloring books or toys. 
you, we learned to pray yeah. in those moments. Shall I, shall I reach over and pinch you? Oh, no, please don't pinch me because <laughs> I had more Pentecostal pinches than than anything. I was I was the hyperactive child. My yeah. goodness, I still am a little bit. Yeah, me too. Um, I remember one time, it was a Sunday night uh, church service. Mom was a big girl. She was. She was. She was heavy. And I remember she and a couple of the other ladies, a lady had come into church service that was disturbed. Uh, today, by by today's standards, some would call it mentally ill, but she she was manifesting a, a demon in her in her life. And I remember this la- this lady that had the spirit in her, uh, not the spirit of the Lord, the right. demonic spirit in her. She was a tiny little thing, and she picked mom up. And I'll never forget seeing that with my life. Like, how's that woman picking up my mom? Yeah, mom is. And uh, I remember mom just so, so gently just said, in the name of Jesus, yes. come out of her. And that woman was completely delivered. Yeah. Peggy didn't have to scream, holler, spit, yell, or anything yeah. else. She just simply declared the authority of Jesus. Yes. And I remember realizing then, it's, I might have been 12 or 13 years old, realizing then, the authority that she walked in because of her relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And it told me a story without realizing it then, looking back now, now I know the story. Yeah. I know the story of her complete trust and reliance on a man that changed her life and brought her. Mom was saved in the floor of the kitchen yeah, in was. the 50s. She gave her heart to Jesus, the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. She wasn't in a church service. No one was preaching. No. She just felt the convicting power of the Holy yeah. Spirit in the kitchen, cleaning the floor. Yes. And surrendered her life right there. And from then on, she walked with that Jesus. And not only did she walk with Jesus, she walked in his authority. Oh, she did. And yeah. to see that active in our lives now, that it's not our authority, it's the authority of Jesus. We operate according to his calling, to his word, and his purposes for our lives. All of that came from one woman saying yes. The power of one woman yeah. saying yes. Yeah. Grandma said yes when she yeah. started Lorraine yes. Church of God. Yes. Mom said yes when she surrendered her heart to Jesus. Yes. And look where we are today because one person said yes. Imagine what would happen when the people that are following our so ministry yes. surrender and yes. say yes. What can happen for the future? It made me think of something too. Uh, Jordan, my oldest son, one of his fondest memories of our mom um, is when he would go stay with her it was or she was he was with her she was at the kitchen table with the bible open always and it it made me think about my daily bread that's how she started her day was at the kitchen table with the bible open and she um she would pray in her room but she sat at that table and and jordan said mom it opened up a an opportunity to talk to grandma about anything you could just tell her anything because she was sitting there reading the word and you know she was open to listening to you, and I just think that's such a powerful thing. And I think about now my daily bread. Yeah, most of us are sitting at a table somewhere. We're sitting at a table, opening the Word in the morning, which is what our mother taught us. Yeah. And so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. And I just, I just happened to think of that as you were speaking about her, but she did walk in the authority of the Lord, and she, her faith was unwavering. Um, now our mother was not perfect. We know no. that. And we're not saying that. Please don't get that impression. But her faith was almost perfect because she did not waver even through breast cancer, knowing that she was going to be home with the Lord. Yeah. She worked to the minute to the minute she couldn't eat. Till the minute her. that she went into the coma, which was on a Sunday. No, it, yeah, it was on a Sunday night. Uh-huh. She went to sleep that day. She only woke up one other time, and it was through night. And um, I'm not sure she was all cognitive at that moment. But until the minute that the Lord had her sleep to rest at that moment and then take her home on Friday, she ministered from the hospital bed. She did. She ministered from the nursing home bed. Um she I've never call, experienced she would it call like that. Call in and, and call them I in. I need to talk to you. She would tell them, and she would pour into them something the Lord said. And we don't know those things. We don't. She'd she, let this she'd pride, she would outlet yeah. us in the room. She'd kick us out of the room and say, I'm, "I'm here to talk with these people." Yeah. Um, there became a line of people there was. every evening that would line up to visit her, and I really think they were waiting on her to give them their word from the Lord. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, she's very prophetic. Very prophetic. Yeah. And um, it was simple. Mm-hmm. Um, we sing a song and it's become one of my favorite songs. It's called Simple Kingdom. And um, my mom's, the message of Jesus was not from a point of theology. Mm-hmm. It was from a point of a woman who put all of her eggs in that basket. Yeah. And she'd relied a hundred thousand percent on what God directed her to do. Yes. She listened for his voice and she walked it out. She walked it. She out. was the woman that had a little bit of uh, a flour and a little bit of oil left. Absolutely. And she yeah. said, you can have it all. Yeah. Yeah. She gave it all. <laughs> yeah. My dad's all where we're going to live. Yeah. But she did draw a little bit of social security off our dad. Yeah. Check. Mm-hmm. And I remember um, how excited she was when she had a check that she could pay tithe on. Yes, I remember that. It thrilled her soul Mm -hmm. that she was able to give because my dad didn't always let her give out of his income. Mm. Um, So that was so special to her to have her own check that she could tithe on. So faithful. So faithful, yeah. Mm -hmm. So faithful. So faithful. He could take our nothingness Mm -hmm. and make it so beautiful and and make it something that is worth more than rubies and diamonds. Yeah. Okay. So he took all of her nothingness, no education. Yeah. No beautiful home <laughs> that she owned. When she died, she didn't own a home. She didn't, yeah. she didn't own fancy dishes, beautiful dresses, only the ones we ended up buying her yeah. later. Yeah. And he took all of that nothing. Yeah. And look what. Yeah. Look at the mm-hmm. result of that. Wow. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. So beautiful. My goodness. I guess the, she's the, kind of our own little personal Mother Teresa. She is. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, don't miss the point of this story. God can use anyone. Mm-hmm. And um, all it takes is for us to say, Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, Lord. I, yeah. I, I'm listening. I'll walk where you open the door. You know, I'll, I'll do whatever you ask. If I gain nothing out of it, yeah. if you get the glory, just say yes. One of my favorite songs right now, and we sang this as a kid growing up, and um, it's been burning in my heart even this week, uh, is the, the song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. And uh, I was in a conference just a few weeks ago, and Francis Chan was, was speaking, and Ben Fitzgerald was speaking, and he shared the story behind that song, I've decided to follow Jesus. And it has become, uh, uh, it's become like an anthem to my own soul Yeah. to ask the question, does he have our yes? Does God have your yes right yeah. now? Are you willing to forsake? There was one of the versions, uh, one of the verses in the song, uh, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Does he have your permission? to invite you to walk away from the life that you have right now to embrace the life he's called for you in the future. When he opens the door, are you going to be willing to walk through the door or are you going to be so married to what's comfortable and familiar that you're going to miss what he's going to do in your life next? And I really hear the Lord asking the question in this podcast today, do I have your yes? He's got my yes. He's got my yes. I know he's got your yes. Those of you on my daily bread, listening to the call every morning, does he have your yes? Can you trust him blindly yeah. to walk in areas yes. in places that you haven't even known yet? It's interesting. I was talking with my sisters earlier, how we hear, especially at the beginning of the year, almost every preacher preaches the, the scripture that says, behold, I do a new thing, says the Lord, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? And we have this expectation. You've heard me say this. We have this expectation that because God says he'll do the new thing that we don't have anything new to do with it. He, we have to partner with him. Yes. When he calls us into the new, that means we leave the old too. And we partner with him and to wait on the Lord is the very idea of being intertwined with him. When he moves, we move. When yes. he speaks, we speak. Yes. When he goes, we go. Yes. That's, that's what he's saying when, when he's asking, do, you, do I have your yes? Yes, you have my yes, Lord. Yes, he yes. has our yes. Amen. Whatever he opens up in the future, every yes. door, doors are opening this year. Yes. Absolutely, doors are opening this year. Do, will he have our yes? Can you leave what you've known for what you do not know in order to walk in the calling of God for your life? 
That's the question that's coming out today. Absolutely. And I believe yeah. that it will require us to make some pivots we weren't expecting to make. I agree. I think that um, we get very comfortable um, in the place that, um, you know, we work, the place that we live. It's our drug. It, it is. It, it is. Even, um, you know, we just came off the, the fast of 21 days. And um, I gave up social media, um, Facebook and Instagram during that time. And I did it because my first instinct is to look at that phone and see what's going on around me. Uh -huh. When our first instinct, Damn. we open our eyes in the morning, needs to be, Lord, what do you have for me today? That's good. What door are you opening today? Um, I want to share something. I've shared this on um, the 6 a.m. hour. And... Um, I don't share this to bring any, you know, accolades to myself, but something I, uh, last year towards the end of the year, we read in Psalms where David paused seven times a day to praise the Lord. Like this. Mm -hmm. So I have found seven scriptures. I started with one scripture and I set seven alarms on my phone and I turned them off today just so we don't interrupt the podcast, but at certain periods of the day, um, as the scripture would be the ringtone. Okay. And it, so it, it's starting to help me memorize verses. That's the first beautiful thing about it. But when it goes off, I remember to stop at that moment and look around to be grateful for something God has done for me that day or grateful in my life. And when it was really cold and our heat went out, it was my fireplace. It doesn't have to be right. <laughs> so religious, you know. Uh, sometimes I'm at work and I'm like, thank you, Lord, that it's Friday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but those alarms have done even more than just for me pausing. Mm -hmm. So people around me have now discovered what they're for. And they'll say, what are you thankful for? That's awesome. What are you grateful for? Yeah. So I encourage you, find a way to start your day in gratitude with the Lord my uh, first alarm is at 5.30. I get up at 5, but my 5.30 is when the first scripture comes on. And many, many times it's like, Lord, I thank you that I have a platform to read your word aloud in the freedom to speak your name. Mm -hmm. And um, I just love that. And um, I, I, I'm just so grateful that, you know, you have to cultivate gratitude in your life. Yes, you do. And, and you have a beautiful podcast on this principle, but... I just, I'm, I'm learning to do that. And when you do that, the things about um, jealousy and comparing yourself and all of those things kind of get pushed aside because you look for the grateful things that God's put in your life. Um, I'm so grateful for my family. And many times I'll tell you guys in, a, in our text, mm -hmm. the best gift our parents ever gave us was each, each other. other. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Because we have each other. Yeah. And if you don't have each other, I encourage you to ask the Lord to your set tribe. someone to your line. Mm, yes. To be your tribe, just like Alphonse. He didn't have somebody left. He had, you know, and that yeah. was another po podcast. But um, I just know that God will send people to surround you um, just like he did for us. And, and he did that for our mother. And uh, he, he's a God of community. Yes. Jesus put himself and around the people. It wasn't the crowd that people wanted him around. It wasn't who he thought they should be with, but he made himself available. Yeah. Are you available? That's good. To go and where he wants you to go? I am. Are you available to speak his name and maybe the, the places that it's not the usual place to say his name? Yeah. Be available. Be available. Yeah. And then, thank you for doing this with me. It's been great. Yeah. I sure do love you. I love you. Proud of you. Our proud mom would be proud of you. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Our parents, both our parents would be proud of you. Yeah. Um, just thankful for what God is doing through my daily bread. I'm thankful for the global vision that he's put up on your, your heart. Um, don't stray from that. So there, yeah. Yeah. We're he's bigger than, he's bigger than the city we live in. He is. Thank God. Yeah. All right. We love you, my daily bread family. We see you next episode. God bless you. Bye.